Welcome to the Digital Photography Podcast Video Edition number 26 for Tuesday, July 29th, 2008. Today is Lightroom 2.0 day. Now normally I would do these uh, video podcasts as a screen capture, but I actually want to talk a little bit about the dual monitor support in Lightroom 2.0. So I'm actually trying uh, this time just to film the screen. I'm going to do my best to stay out of the way of the camera because I know nobody really came here to see me. But in case you did, here I am. I'm over here. All right. uh, These uh, video podcasts on Lightroom 2.0 are going to be uh, done in a series uh, because there's a lot of new features and a lot of things to talk about. I want to start off today with just a little bit about the library module. Uh, First of all, the dual screen support that's new and that's a that's a really big thing if you have Lightroom and you're planning on upgrading to 2.0 I would highly suggest you get a second monitor even if it's just a very cheap 18 inch uh, you know Sony or whatever just a, a LCD or whatever it really makes working in Lightroom so much easier now you can go over here and click on things in the grid view and immediately see them full screen in your uh, in your main window here saves a little bit of real estate most people would normally have a strip across the bottom here which is still available if you go down to it but that takes up a little bit of uh, screen real estate so it's kind of nice not having that down there gives you a lot bigger screen to deal with your image and you get to see a, a full size preview straight away Okay, um, what else do we have here? On the second monitor in the grid view over here, there is now a search box at the top. You can type in a keyword in the top. I'll just type in F15, see what comes up. And, well, I only have one image tagged as an F15, but it's way over here. And that's actually something I'm going to talk about in just a minute, tagging images with keywords. But you can see how easy it is now to find images. If I had... Uh, you know, a few dozen images tagged with a certain keyword. I could just type it in right here. I'd see them. Then I can go pick the one I want and say, okay, that's the one I want. Great. And then I'd go from there. Now, um, keyword tagging is uh, something that I'm real big on. I really love having a lot of keywords. It makes it so much easier to search for my images. But in the earlier versions of Lightroom, um, it really wasn't as easy as it could be and now it has gotten a lot easier uh, for a couple of different reasons one of them is keyword suggestions now i'm going to demonstrate that right now i've clicked on this helicopter picture and i'll zoom in here and look at the little card that's in front of it it says it's an hh60 so that tells me that i want to tag this image as an hh60 I also know that it's a helicopter. I also know that it's a variant of the Black Hawk, known as a Pave Hawk. So I want to put all those words in there as keywords. So if I'm searching for an HH60 or a Black Hawk or a Pave Hawk or just a helicopter in general, all those words, uh, this this will come up if I search for any of those words. So I'm going to zoom in here real quick to the keywording panel. And I want to show you what happens when I type in a new keyword like HH60. You'll see here in the keyword suggestions that it's come up with USAF, Helicopter, Blackhawk, Pavehawk, Paris, Le Bourget, and a few others that are a little less related. What it's done is it's gone and looked at other images that I've tagged with HH, uh, HH60 and seeing what other keywords are associated with that. So now I can just click on USAF, Helicopter, Blackhawk, Pavehawk, and all those words are now added. So when I type in a keyword, it looks for relevant keywords. I'm not sure exactly what logic it uses, but it seems to work really well. I'll uh, do another example here. So now I've got this F15 in here, and we'll zoom back into the keywording panel. Okay, so you can see that I've already got three keywords in here, 2007, airshow, and airshow as one word. Let's type in F15. See what happens. 
the keyword suggestions changed. Now lately I've been tagging a lot of images from uh, Nellis Air Force Base in Las Vegas, Nevada. So it did come up with Nevada, Las Vegas, Nellis. They don't apply to this particular image, but it's pretty cool that it thought of that because I've been doing a lot of tagging lately of some F-15s I shot out in uh, Las Vegas. But it did come up with Eagle, that's a good one to add because it is an F-15 Eagle. Now let's see if I type in Le Bourget, which is where I took this picture, what it comes up with. I haven't done this in advance, so I don't know what it's going to come up with. Came up with Paris, France, that's good. Both of those apply. So it's really pretty cool that it, it sort of thinks for you and finds related keywords. Oh, there went Twitter. Somebody's posting. Um, it finds related keywords for you that you may or may not think of while you're, uh, while you're doing this. Now the next thing I want to talk about here in the library uh, module is something new in collections called Smart Collections. Now a Smart Collection is a sort of dynamic collection based on some criteria that you specify. Now since I'm so big on keywording, I make some of my Smart Collections based on keywords. Now I can create a new one here just by clicking Create Smart Collection and let's call this F-16 Falcon and spell it correctly. Now what I want to do is say create this collection based on keyword that contains F16 but I also want another criteria because I already have a smart collection called Thunderbirds which is the US Air Force Thunderbirds demo team and they fly F16s so I don't want those pictures to show up in this smart catalog so now I'm gonna say keywords doesn't contain Thunderbirds and go ahead and create it. Now as you can see I have a smart collection called F-16 Falcon with 1923 images in it and we'll zoom out here so you can see that is a picture of an F-16. It's actually a model of an F-16. These are all F-16 pictures but none of them are the F-16s of the United States Air Force Thunderbirds because they have their own smart collection which is right here. And because I've given every single one of these images the keyword Thunderbirds I was actually able to create a smart collection that just looks for the keyword Thunderbirds, that's all. So that's a very powerful feature now with the uh, smart collections and frankly when I made the switch from Aperture to Lightroom that's the one thing that I missed from Aperture. Aperture had a very similar feature called uh, I believe it was Smart Libraries or Smart I'm not sure what they called it now I can't remember but it was it was very similar and it did the same thing and it's one of the things that I really missed from Aperture so I'm glad it was added in to, uh, to Lightroom 2.0 Well, that's it for today. I'm going to uh, prepare several more of these podcasts and give you some more cool features of Lightroom 2.0 in the future. And until next time, keep on shooting.